hello team happy life factory this week we've got long beach and i know a lot of you don't like this track because well it's a concrete jungle and if you make any mistake it will destroy your car so try not to give on up it, give up on it too soon again like any other track the more you practice it the easier it becomes the faster you get so i've had time today usually i'll spend a couple of days trying to go and get a a fast lap but I'm going to try and get these laps out to you um, these track guides a couple of days earlier and try and get into you on a Tuesday morning so then that way you've got longer time to practice the correct lines rather than going out there and just hit the walls quite literally on this track so what I'll do to begin with is I will just play it like always from cockpit view just so you can just see what gears I'm in and how we take the corner and the perspective from the car. So I'm just going to push play, I'll shut up for the first lap and then we'll do a external view and I'll talk through everything we need to be doing. Okay, so that's the lap of Long Beach, 119.5. Um, I think there's a little bit more time to get off, maybe about three more attempts, but that's the perfect lap, and I haven't got enough time. There's not, I'm not going to be able to get teach you much more if I do the perfect lap. Um, all this, all the breaking points and everything are still the same. It's just those fine little margins. So as you can see, I'm on full fuel. There's still 86 kilos of fuel in the car. Um, the tyre pressures are still low, so this is, I think, that was my first flying lap. Again, with, with any GT3, usually your first couple of laps out the pits are going to be your quickest um, during these tests due to the, the way the tyres work at low pressure. There's a lot more grip um, and a lot better turning. But the setup, the way it's done... I've checked it all out. I won't go into it all now because we haven't got another half an hour to go through it all. But it's it's been set up in a way to give you enough front end grip, but not too much to destroy the front tyres. Um, uh, the front end isn't too tight, so it's not too pointy. It's meant to be flowy, so it's a bit soft. And on a street circuit like this, you don't want it too pointy because you can chew up those tyres quite quickly. Um, and especially on such a tight circuit, you want those tyres to be your friend. And you don't want to end up in the wall by overheating them and understeering off the track. So, down to turn one. So, we keep it tight to the wall. Hang on, this has been the right lap to begin with anyway. Let's make sure this is the correct one. Yep, lap 38. that is correct there we go okay so the travel down to turn one we keep it tight to the wall and what we're looking out for is the 400 marker right there so let's get rid of the laps 
So we're right next to the 400 meter board now. And we're in fifth gear, so let's go to chase. Let's just bring this back a few frames. So the red line here, you can't go, that's your track limit, but you can go over it, just don't go over the blue lines. So this is your pit exit, you can't cross this as you come out the pit. So be careful and you can't go over this blue line during the race. It's a black flag, it will destroy your race immediately, so please be aware. So. We're coming up to the 400 meter board and that's our braking marker. So we're looking out for this right here. And when you feel like in a cockpit you're next to that, you are heavy on the brakes. This is a heavy braking zone. So again, as always, straight line braking. Don't be steering the car anymore. You want it as straight as possible to maximize to get it slowed down as quick as possible so you can turn in and get on the power quickly. So as we can see, right at the 400 meter board we are heavy on the brake about 80 percent and we are heavy in a straight line all the way until we get down to second gear when we have to turn in now we're down to second gear now bleeding off the brake and we're staying on the brake we're always trail braking into the corners on this track to get the car to turn in and keep in grip come off the brakes too early the the front can lift you'll get understeer you're in the wall get off the brakes too violently and get on the power too quickly you can uh, upset the rear overload it and then you spun the car so we're about being smooth but aggressive on this track so we don't want to take too much curve here um, you can do um, I found that if I took a slightly wider line and didn't lift the car up and upset it I could get the power down more effectively on the exit without the possibility of it bouncing and kicking in the traction control so quite a lot of steering lock this is a street circuit so you know a lot of tight corners a lot of heavy steering you've got to be quite aggressive and we're already on the power we're, we're already on the power as we're turning into the corner as soon as that we know they're going to hit that apex and we know we got the angle on the car and the rotations correct as soon as I feel that rotation I'm on the power 80% and once I know I'm not going to hit the wall and I can feel the grip up we're in full power and you have to use all of the track get comfortable don't think of these as brick walls just think of them as, as firm track limits whereas Austria in the Red Bull ring it was impossible to get uh, 10 laps without getting one incident point this track it's seeing these differently don't see them as you know things to avoid just see it as this is definitely a track limit and you can't go any further obviously because uh, it will destroy your race but at least you know exactly where you can go and you can't go so keeping it tight and then we're going to try and almost straight line it as much as possible as we break into this zone and we're going to go from fourth gear all the way down to first still braking now keeping the weight on the front wheels as we turn in bleeding off as I apply more steering lock and the idea is to get on the power as quick as possible I get a little bit of a slide on here that's okay because the traction control is not kicking in too much and I wanted the rotation in the car to get the angle of exit so and I bring it immediately to the left and we're going to try and get it as straight lined as possible so we apply about 40 percent brake pressure now and we want to be doing that let's find you a brake marker so as we're coming to the end of this part of the fence here with the boards this is our brake marker and what I'm doing I am almost slightly tracking out so I can open up the entry into the corner if we just go in board for this bit I just want to show you the gearing so we're in gear 2 and we're staying in gear 2 so as soon as you see that one way sign getting close to you that's that that's when we're hitting the brake and you see the car dip forward there 
and we're still on the brake ever so slightly to get it the, keep the weight on the front tyres. We're not on the power yet, and as soon as we feel it gripping up, we're half power. As soon as it settles down, we build the power back up. There is a bit of bounce on the line I do there. Now, if you're not confident doing that line, then all I can suggest is just do a slightly wider entry. It can be just as fast. It just depends on your driving preference. Let's just bring that back so you can see. So I use quite a lot of it there because where the tyre pressures are a bit lower, you can be a little bit more aggressive, but just be careful. So again, we're still on the, we're trailing the brake in, feel the car rotate, and as soon as I feel the car grip up, I apply part power, I wait for the bump, wait for the car to settle, and then I bleed the power back on. With minimal steering input, we are getting the car to stay in second gear, and we want to maximize the track on the left hand side to open up the exit for this next corner. So we're gently on the brake, 20 to 30 percent, steering it in, bringing it down to about 10 percent, very little brake now, waiting for the car to rotate, nip just a little bit, not too much, because if you cut too much off, you'll change the angle and the exit of the corner and you're very more likely to get caught by the wall. So a wider line here, almost a late apex, because with a later apex comes a tighter exit. We don't want an early apex because then we'll end up having a wider exit and that's we don't want to be collected by the wall. So later apex here. Wait, be patient with the power, a small amount of power, and then build it up gradually. You've got to feel for the grip. Get on the power too quickly. And because the road is very bumpy here and it's off camber, you can see I've got it right on the limit. I'm about to hit the wall. But I'm so confident with the car now, I, I, I know what it's going to do. You have to learn its behaviours on this track. Um, and now the power is fully on. It's because I'm in a straight line. So if you see... I'll just bring it back over so slightly. So this phase here... You can see all the weight loading up on the left hand side where the car is leaning so much. So as that little bit of rotation there and I feel that, I feel that happening just before I get onto full throttle and that split second I feel that rotation, that's when I put the throttle on and I know the grip is there. The car isn't bouncing, it's off camber so it's going to run wide but you have to use all of the track and then we're going to bring it to the right hand side and I'm just going to bring this forward a little bit and here you can see where the wall falls away from here and it follows the exact angle you want to be attacking and exiting the last corner so we're now straight lining to this section of the wall here and then we're going to follow it round into the 200 meter board and then we're going to be heavy braking and trailing it into the next corner so here, let's just push play for the second. So as you can see, we're following the line of the wall very closely. Get very used to, again, when you're practicing, don't be safe. Crash as many times as you want. It's the whole point of practice. You've got to find the limit to learn the limit. If you keep practicing and safety, safely doing it and, you know, and then you're coming to the end of your lap going, why can't I go any quicker? It's because you're not using all of the track. There's always a reason why you're not going any quicker. And it's usually something you can come out, watch a replay like this, and just look at how much of the track you're actually using. This track, um, like a few of us have seen in the comments already, um, you have to utilize almost the entirety of the track. You can't be afraid of these walls. You just need to run them. So here, when we get to the 200 meter board, we're 80% on the brake, very heavy, all the weight shifted to the front, keep it in a straight line, and as we bleed off the brake, we're shifting down the gears into second gear, and as we're coming off the brake, we're adding more steering rotation, hit the apex, now a lot of steering angle here, because there's a lot of grip, 
and the car on this street circuit grips up very nicely and again you can see all the weight loaded to the front right and the rear and you can already I can already see that this car is now going to begin to rotate as we get on the power so what will happen is now as I get on the power I don't want to go out too far I don't want to get against the wall because if you go out too far there just isn't enough grip and you can see that the track actually falls away from you it's off camber so we don't want to go too far out we want to keep it on the lane furthest to the exit so let's just show you that so I get on the power that car nicely rotates and we don't go any further than this lane I found you go out any further than that it slows you down because then you've got to go and bring it all the way over to the left again and then trying to get the car settled for the next corner is vital so the more time you've got to spend bringing it over to the other side of the track you're not going to have enough time to get the car settled in a straight line for the next braking phase so we're bringing it over to the left going up the gears and here I believe we should be let me just double check we go into this in third and we break down into second gear at the 200 meter board yeah so get to 200 meter board we're on the brake straight away so let's get that from outside let's bring it back to exactly where I'm braking so again we're bleeding off the throttle and this is a corner that's off camber again and we this this isn't actually the limits of the track the limit of the track is the wall so we get as close to that as possible on this lap um, I understeer ever so slightly I don't maximize it um, but it worked for me I know I could have gone a bit quicker but again when you're doing this every lap over a three hour period you don't want to be on the limit the entire time because you are asking for an accident um, so just have it in reserve so we're braking heavily 80% we're going to go down into second gear we're turning in and we're slowly coming off the brake still holding the brake get the color rotate as much as possible off the brake now add the steering lock now here we cut this that is not the track limit the track limits the wall you can see I've left quite a bit too much here but the line I wanted that worked for me meant that I could get the car to rotate and get settled more on the exit and get on the power um, I could have got a bit tighter um, and probably got the power a little bit earlier but this for me was the line I kept coming to I can improve on this but um, when you do practice this just imagine that this is your track limit you're trying to kiss the wall on the on the entry and just get used to it. it doesn't matter if you take your car out a few times smash it up it's just practice at least you know where it is so we're already on the power not fully progressively building it up as we come off the lock you can see that when I get on the power it just rotates that car just a little bit more as we come off the lock the car settles down the rear squats down and I can get on the power and the exit is nice and quick again using all the exit here get the car drift out and get used just get used to driving near the walls so you can get the perspective in the car of where you should be okay let's just bring this forward to the next section so here we're waiting for the after the 400 meter board so we're staying in fourth gear we don't shift up to fifth just after the 400 meter board before the 300 braking very heavily down two gears and we want to be riding the um, rumble strip they have put here you can go right over it don't want to go over it too much because it can unsettle the car for the next uh, section of the track when we go left so again after the 400 meter board very heavy on the brakes there's loads of grip on this track for braking so you can brake really heavy quite late 50 percent now and as we're going down in the second gear we're turning in bleeding off the brake don't come off the brake too early wait for it to rotate off the brake completely and then we're back on the power because there's plenty of grip here and 
if we're on the power nice and early or you know just a little bit of power that shifts the weight even further to the left hand side and lifts these wheels up if you go over this curb too slow and you're not on the power you will just bounce you have to get the car to lean and get its weight to be transferred to the left hand side so the right hand side lifts so we can go over this nice and smoothly it's one of those corners where if you go over it slower you're going to come out slower go over it faster and with confidence and get on the power mid corner you'll come out more controlled and the car will bounce less but it's a good balance in between because like any corner again you push it too hard you just end up in a wall or your slide or understeer so we're not going to use you can go and use all the exit oh my mouse isn't working very well sorry one moment there we go um, I don't want to use all the exit here because I want to keep it three quarters away across the track so I can bring it over to the right quickly enough so I can get a nice angle for the final last two corners of the circuit so here I'm waiting for the car to settle getting fully on the power so it doesn't slide out and then I'm bringing it over to the right not too far and then I'm going to bring it to the left and get that weight shifted to the right hand side so now all the weight is now on the right hand side and as soon as that's happened I'm gently on the brakes and again this is all in second gear all the way through so gently on the brakes and then barely anything just touching it to keep the weight on the front wheels to get the traction and then we're completely off the brakes and you should be able to give it a little squirt of throttle in second gear just as we come into the last section the car should slide a little bit just modulate it don't use too many of the bumps because now we're going to be braking and shifting down the first gear and right there as we're shifting down the first and we're changing direction and we're coming off that speed bump you can see the car instantly rotates I'm adding lock on quite quickly shifting the first turning right heavy brakes the car shifts all its weight to the left hand side we're just adding more and more lock staying on the brake get all the weight to the front wheels just got to be patient get on the power too early and the car just goes into traction control and slows you down be patient get on the power use all of the exit straighten up as quick as possible and we should be fine and that is the final difficult corner um, of the circuit you can lose if you get that last section wrong that last turn I've, I've done it where I've been like half a second up on my lap gone into that last corner and just gone in too hot understeered and lost six tenths of a second so it's vital that last corner is the make or breaker of the lap and I also think it's where most crashes are going to be there's going to be a lot of last minute dive bombs you can't really go too wide there because there's no room for two cars you're one of you's going to end up in the wall so I wouldn't advise overtaking on that part of the track but if the opportunity does come up you will take it if you know it's the right thing to do but just don't make that your prime spot okay and then I'm just going to play it all the way to the end and then just be aware when you do come to this section and you start your next lap you need to get used to hugging this but just be careful because there are a couple parts like there that stick out just a little bit more than the rest let me just bring that back so you can see because it caught me out a couple of times right here when you're in the car that bit sticks out ever so slightly and it goes back in again and then there's a second part there that sticks out so just be careful run the red line get used to trading the wall and get used to doing that for the whole track and you will be fine it's a lot easier than you think it's just the mentality of knowing that you're not going to hit the wall you'll be fine um, and seeing the walls as your track limits rather than crash barriers so what I will do now is as I always do I put the lap back on from the beginning and you can watch it from this point of view and then I will go through a couple more bits after and wish you luck and I'll see you in the next practice
Okay, so just the last couple of things I'm going to go over before I go this week is I'm going to show you the track conditions I tested in. So I get these um, from the VRS site. Um, they always put up the track conditions that they believe are going to be for the sprint and the endurance races for the VRS. Um, and they're usually always 100% correct. So beginning of the race should be around this temperature. The track is very hot. So this is why also the way the setup has been built. I've gone into this. I um, won't go into too much detail. It is m nice and softer on the front to stop the fronts from digging in too much and having to slide across the track. Um, that allows the, the tyres to have a bit of an easier time to keep the temperatures down a bit. Um, if you do want to stiffen up the front or change anything on the setup, make sure you discuss it with your teams. If it works for you all and it suits your driving style, by all means do it. But just make sure, you know, try and maximise this setup first. Go as fast as you can. Spend a few hours on it, if anything. And then if you can go quicker with another setup and you can um, do a full stint on it, look at your tyres at the end of the stint. Look at how well they can serve. And then if you do change anything on a setup, anything with the geometry of the alignment of the wheels, then just do it and then check again in the same conditions your tyre wear at the end of that. Um, again, little, little changes, it all depends on your driving style. Um, I've got an 80% usage at all the endurance events. They usually start off around that amount. Um, sometimes they're a bit less, sometimes they're a bit more, but averagely it's around the 80% and during the race it goes up to 100% very quickly, so there's plenty of rubber out there, the track shouldn't be too green. Um, yeah, so I will get this, these um, sessions out to you earlier rather than Wednesdays or Thursdays during the week, try and get them out on every Tuesday morning, Tuesday day, um, and then that way you can practice a lot more about having a fight off the bad habits you've picked up during the week when you're trying to learn the track. So I'll leave it there. And if you have any questions, as always, just drop me a message. Um, and if you happen to go any quicker, please let me know. Um, I'm always interested to see what you've done um, and then see what I'm doing. I can make myself quicker too. Um, there's a lot of you getting very fast out there now brilliant to see and a lot of you mentoring other people it's very helpful and that's what the team's all about so I'll say uh, goodbye now I'll see you all next week so behalf of team happy life factory and simulation motorsport take it easy see you in the next race